This snake mama was a little angry. When one of my snakes lays eggs, the first thing I do is remove the mother so I could collect the eggs. Most of the time they don't give me an issue, but this girl took a snap at me. Each snake is going to have their own personality. Although she's usually a great snake, I don't completely trust her. I would never bring her to one of my events where I let people hold or pet snakes. After all the eggs are marked, I'll collect them and put them in my egg box. Usually when I mark them as they lay, that's where the embryo is. But every now and then the mother does roll the eggs around and the embryo could end up on the bottom. Which may cause the embryo to die. So I like to candle the eggs just to be sure the embryo is on top and the egg is fertile. The embryo could be identified as a circle within a network of veins. After I have the eggs safe and sound in the egg box, I'll mark the box with the name and date. This is especially important when you have multiple clutches of eggs in your incubator. And even more important when you're breeding complex morphs of ball pythons. It helps determine when the clutch is going to hatch and who the mother and the father of that clutch is. 21 days ago, this ball python laid a clutch of eggs. She was being a good mom and protecting her eggs. But what she doesn't realize is that I need to collect those eggs to give them the best chance at hatching without any issues. And on day 21, these eggs are looking fantastic. The shell is nice and firm and there's no sign of denting which means that they have plenty of humidity. If these eggs were already denting in on day 21, it would mean that they didn't have enough humidity and the eggs were dehydrated. When I candled these eggs, they still have really nice strong veins and the bottom of the egg is getting darker. Which is a great sign because that's actually the snake developing inside of the egg. And you could actually see the snake moving inside of this egg. At 21 days of incubation, most of the snake's features are already developed. Although the snake would probably be mostly pink. I've noticed that color and pattern is one of the last things to develop on the snake. And depending on the morph, some snakes will even hatch pink and they won't develop their colors until after a few weeks. We'll see what this clutch looks like in about 35 days. It's moving in there. These ball python eggs are on day 46 of incubation. We're starting to see some significant dimpling in the eggs. And the shells are getting thinner as the babies get closer to hatching. We're roughly 10 days away from seeing these eggs start to hatch. And there should be some pretty awesome looking snakes inside. Let's candle the eggs today to see how the snakes are developing. When candling the eggs, we're always looking for the presence of strong veins. And the insides of the eggs, especially near the bottom, should be getting darker. Which is actually the developing snake. And I think you could see some of the snake's pattern on this one. And look, you could see him moving. This snake is really active. It's definitely one of the most active snakes I've ever seen while it was still inside the egg. From what I could see, all of these snakes look like they're developing perfectly, so they should be hatching right on time. Ball pythons usually hatch between day 55 and day 60 for me. However, this year it's been a little bit warmer, so they've been hatching a little early. So in reality, we may see some new baby snakes in the next week. These ball python eggs are on day 53 of incubation and they're already starting to hatch. And the first one to hatch out is a black-eyed leucistic, which is an all-white snake with black eyes. Four more eggs still need to hatch, so we're going to try to capture them hatching on video. First, I'll separate all of the eggs. The shell is really soft and thin right now, so they come apart really easily. I'll position the eggs in a way that we could see all of the eggs in one video. And then I'll use the time-lapse function on the video camera, so we'll get a short video every 10 seconds. After experimenting with a few different angles, I think I think this one will work best. On this setting, the camera has about four and a half hours of battery life. And then I'll attach a battery pack that should give it an additional two hours. And here are the results. We could actually see some of the snakes pipping. Pipping is when a snake uses its egg tooth to slice open the egg when it's ready to hatch. And as you can see here, after they pip, they like to poke their heads in and out of the eggs and they'll do that for about a day or two. And then finally, when they're ready, they'll crawl out. Well, that was fascinating to watch them pip. Let's check up on them tomorrow and we'll see if any crawled out. These ball pythons are on day 55 of incubation and the first one crawled out of its egg. There are four snakes that haven't crawled out of the egg yet. Two of them haven't pipped at all and two of them have pipped and should be crawling out soon. The first one to crawl out is really unique looking. I'll have to do some research because to be honest, I'm not really sure what genes make up this morph. The father was a vanilla fire HRA and the mother was a firefly. So we have four more snakes that still need to hatch. Two of them have already pipped. Pipping is when the snake uses its egg tooth to slice open the egg when it's ready to hatch. And as you can see here, the snakes really sliced up these eggs. And on these other two eggs, I don't see any pips or little slices at all. However, I could feel the snake responding to my touch through the eggshell. So I'm very confident that they are alive in there. They probably just need some more time to finish absorbing their yolk. I'll try to capture the last two snakes pipping on video. And maybe we'll see the other two crawling out of their eggs. I'll set up the camera and get these little ones back in the incubator. And I'll update you tomorrow. 
These ball pythons are all out of their eggs now. The first one is a black-eyed Lucy, which is a white snake with black eyes. But it does have some yellow spots, so it'll be interesting to see what it looks like after it sheds. And it was our most active snake in the clutch. And these next two were the darkest snakes in the clutch. Every one of these snakes absorbed all of the yolk inside of their egg, which I'm really happy to see. Because in my past experiences, snakes that absorbed all of their yolk are overall healthier, and they will usually eat regularly for me. Here you can see the last two snakes of the clutch pipping. And the last snake in this clutch is pretty mesmerizing. I'm thinking this one is just like the father, an HRA vanilla fire. The snakes will usually get a little darker as they age, but I'm excited to see this one after the first shed. Now that the snakes are all out of their eggs, I'll give them a quick rinse to wash that egg goop and substrate off of them. And just like all of my hatchlings, I'll spend a little time with each one almost every day. This will help condition them to human interaction, which will make for a more relaxed and easygoing snake. Now that they're all washed up, we'll put them with their other clutch mate and wait for their first shed. These ball pythons hatched 12 days ago and they just had their first shed and they look amazing. This one has a very clean pattern with some flaming or blushings along the side. And this one has a head stamp that sort of looks like the Mickey Mouse logo, which is common in the vanilla morph. He also has two little dots on each side of his nose that I absolutely love. And this snake is exquisite. It's called the vanilla cream. I love how the side pattern is sort of washed out and it's left with that predominant dorsal stripe. And this is our black eyed leucistic. And it's actually the first one that I've ever hatched. It's similar to the blue-eyed leucistics, but this one has black eyes. It also has some pale yellow dorsal marking, which makes it really unique looking. And finally, this is our most complex snake out of the clutch. It's a mixture of three different genes, the vanilla, fire, and HRA genes. And to me, it is mesmerizing to look at. Here's one last side-by-side -side look at this clutch, because now that they're all shed out, it's time to separate them into their own enclosures. And then we'll give them a day or two to settle in, and then offer them their first meal.